Hello and welcome to our monthly report from Parliament's plenary session in Strasbourg. Hearings of the European Commissioner's designate continued here this week, with the last four candidates answering MEPs' questions on their portfolios. Parliament was due to vote on the Commission as a whole on the 26th of January. The resignation of Bulgarian Commissioner-designate Rumiana Zeleva on Tuesday, however, will now delay this process. Following sustained and unfounded attacks against her before, during and after her hearings, Zeleva withdrew herself as a candidate for the humanitarian aid post, citing her belief she would not be judged fairly or objectively in a vote by the Development Committee. She will be replaced as Bulgarian Commissioner-designate by World Bank Vice President Kristalina Georgieva. Following a hearing of the new candidate early next month, Parliament will now vote on the Commission on the 9th of February. Italian Commissioner-designate Antonio Tajani came before the Industry, Research and Energy Committee on Monday evening. He spoke of the need to modernise industrial policy. Antonio Tajani was an MEP in our group for 14 years before being appointed to the European Commission in 2008. He's been proposed by the Italian government for the new commission and now has been put in charge of industrial policy and developing entrepreneurship in the EU. At his confirmation hearing in Strasbourg, he set out his approach to the job. In particular, he was keen to stress that a successful industrial policy can go hand in hand with a robust environmental policy. I am absolutely convinced that we can create a marriage between industrial policy and the fight against climate change. They are two sides of the same coin, two interdependent policies which are, in the end, aiming at the same goal. Mr. Tajani also set out an ambitious stance with regard to transforming the European Union's industrial base. I believe that we need a new industrial policy. Given the crisis and everything that has happened in today's Europe, we can't have an industrial policy from the 70s, 80s or 90s. We need to make a jump in terms of quality. We need to discuss this and the crisis needs to be what prompts us to start a new phase. Economic recovery, fighting climate change and implementing the new powers included under the Lisbon Treaty are three of the main issues the EU must tackle in the coming months. Spanish Prime Minister José Luis Zapatero came to Parliament this week to present the priorities of his six months European Union presidency. He promised MEPs to work on measures to address these problems. EPP Group Chairman Joseph Dole welcomed the objectives but expressed some scepticism about the solutions proposed by a socialist government that has not been able to stop the economic downturn in its own country. Spain is leading the unemployment list in Europe with 20% of its labor force unemployed and has also increased its public deficit to 11% of GDP. I commend your will to make a return to growth and job creation the top priorities of your presidency. But to be honest, Prime Minister, I have said that we must be honest with each other. I'm not sure that the solution that you and your political family are advocating for getting out of the crisis and for turning a social Europe into reality are the most appropriate. For the EPP group, job creation and growth cannot be achieved by increasing public spending and debt, but by maintaining a suitable economic, fiscal and sustainable environment for companies, especially SMEs. And only sustainable economic growth, underlined Dole, will be the key to recovering the social cohesion lost as an effect of the biggest economic crisis suffered around the globe in the last century. Measures proposed by the Spanish presidency will at least provide a new basis for discussion on two of the EU's main political needs, the need to better coordinate economic policies and the need to agree on a common energy policy as soon as possible. Implementation of the new institutional arrangements under the Lisbon Treaty was also one of the items discussed with the Spanish Prime Minister, as he will be the first to coexist with the new permanent president of the European Council, Herman von Rompuy, and EU High Representative for Foreign Policy, Catherine Ashton. The EU response to the recent earthquake in Haiti has shown that without coordination between all the EU institutions, Europe will not be ranked as a player of first importance on the world stage.
European Commission President José Manuel Barroso pointed out that despite not making the headlines, the EU has shown great solidarity with Haiti since the start. Hasta este momento, la Comisión está dispuesta a movilizar up to this point, the Commission is ready to mobilize 130 million euro, bringing the total amount of immediate assistance from the EU to 222 million euro, including member state contributions. And that's not counting civil protection aid. The Commission could mobilize 200 million euro more in long term aid. I can guarantee that the Commission and the European Union are putting into practice the values and principles of solidarity. Puedo asegurar que la Comisión y la Unión Europea están demostrando con hechos los valores y principios de la solidaridad. During the debate with Rodríguez Zapatero, EPP Vice Chairman Jaime Mayor Oreja also called for one of the forgotten problems of the EU to be addressed, the increasing lack of appreciation by European citizens of the work carried out by European institutions providing real solutions to their problems instead of making promises and speeches will be the only way to recover their confidence in the Europe, he said. MEPs have also been discussing key foreign policy issues, including the situation in Yemen. Counter-terrorism forces are worried the area may be an Al-Qaeda stronghold. The recent failed attempt to blow up an airliner by a suspected Islamist terrorist who'd lived in Yemen has reinforced concerns about the country being a springboard for Al-Qaeda attacks against the West. A rebel insurgency in the country is also destabilizing the government and threatening to draw neighboring Saudi Arabia into a wider conflict. Jose Salafranca, a Spanish MEP and our group's coordinator on the Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, used his speech to highlight the positive approach that the United States is taking to Yemen and suggested that this example should be followed by the European Union. There is one important fact to consider. Today we have armies that don't have obvious enemies, and we have enemies that do not have an army. But President Obama reacted very quickly after the failed attack in Detroit, and General Petraeus recently visited Yemen for the third occasion in a very short space of time. We see that the United States is mobilizing a significant package of economic assistance and is developing a policy that is producing results. In reply, the Commission pledged to redouble efforts to help stabilize Yemen and assist the country to chart a more secure future. That's all for this session, but we'll be back in February with the latest on the new EU Commission and other stories. To keep up to date in the meantime, visit our website, eppgroup.eu. Thanks for watching.